We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. Worship him, Christ the Lord. Let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name and worship him let's forget about ourselves and magnify his name christ the lord him cry Brother Chris Thank you brother What was that in your hand went down there you forgot to turn it on. Yeah, okay. <laughs> what, you want him to do it again? Later. later. Okay. <laughs> Hymn number 660, Onward Christian Soldiers. Onward Christian Soldiers. Marching as to war With the cross of Jesus Going on before Christ the royal master Leads against the foe Forward into battle See his banner go Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before at the sign of triumph Satan's host does flee on then Christian soldiers on to victory hell's foundations quiver at the shout of praise brothers lift your voices loud your anthers praise onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before like a mighty army moves the church of God brothers we are treading where the saints have trod we are not divided all one body we one in hope and doctrine one in charity onward christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of jesus going on before onward then ye people join our happy throng blend with ours your voices in the triumph song glory lord and honor 
unto Christ the King. This through countless ages men and angels sing. Onward Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus going on before. Haven't sung that in a while, have you? Go to the next one over, go back one. 659, lead on, O King Eternal. Lead on, O King Eternal, the day of march has come. Forth in fields of conquest, thy tent shall be our home. Through days of preparation, thy grace has made us strong. And now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle song. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease. And holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords of clashing or roll of stirring drums, with deeds of love and mercy, the heavenly kingdom comes. Lead on, O King Eternal, we follow not with fears, for gladness breaks like morning where'er thy face appears. Thy cross is lifted o'er us, we journey in its light. The crown awaits the conquest. Lead on, O God of might. Amen. All right, so uh, hymn number 16, all the way to the front of the book. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I give you For you are my righteousness. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you. I worship you, almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I want to do. I give you praise, for you are my righteousness. I worship you. Almighty God, there is none like you. Amen. Thank you, Clara. Good evening, everybody. That was pretty bad. That's pretty bad. You guys are tired or something. Are you all tired? I'm sorry. 
We need a little nap. I could hum you a lullaby or something. It wouldn't take that? No. All right. Well, since we're all here, we might as well turn to 2 Samuel chapter 3. Brother Leroy, how are you, sir? It's good to see you, brother. All right. 2 Samuel chapter 3. We will uh, dissect some of it. <laughs> I'm not promising how much. I'm supposed to get through 19, I believe. Is that right, Andy? That sounds, that sounds about right. But you're okay either way, right? All right, sounds good. Andy is going to lead next Wednesday, his first Wednesday ever, next week. So that'll be great. All right, here we go. Second uh, Samuel chapter 3, interesting chapter, or at least the first part is quite interesting. I'll read this, the first five verses, and absolutely get all of the names wrong for us. So here we go. Now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, and David grew steadily stronger, but the house of Saul grew weaker continually. Sons were born to David at Hebron. If you remember, that's where he is right now. Um, and uh, his firstborn was Amnon. And that was by Ahinoam, the Jezreelitess. And his second, uh, it's actually pronounced Caleb, by uh, Abigail, the widow of Nabal the Carmelite. And the third, Absalom, the son of Mekah the daughter of Talmai, king of Geshur. And the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith. And the fifth was Shephatiah. I don't really know what that is. The son of Abital. And the sixth is Ithrium by David's wife, Egla. They were born to David at Hebron. All right. That was fun, wasn't it? And we get to do that all over again as we walk through this together. So I may just change their names on occasion. Bob, Bill. George. That'd be all right? Sounds good to me. Okay, so what, what we learned last week, if you remember, there's a lot of uh, battles going on in, in 2 Samuel chapter 2. There's a battle uh, over, over, the, over the, uh, the nation of Israel, right? We, we've got two people that are uh, named king right now. Uh, we've got one who is David, who is king of Judah. And then we have, you guys remember the other guy? Ishbosheth, he is uh, king or uh, kind of king. And remember, we got kind of uh, on the time frame, but for not for tonight, we're going to talk about the last two years. And so Ishbosheth is king over all of the rest of Israel. But Abner really is uh, king, and Ishbosheth is just being the figurehead. We're going to learn that as we walk through. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 3. But, uh, but anyway, so we've got this battle going on between them. Uh, the battle was in length last, uh, last week in 2 Samuel chapter 2. I'm, I'm not going to go over that, but just know that uh, 2 Samuel chapter 3 and verse 1, there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. So for at least two years, again, that is the timing that we get from 2 Samuel chapter 2, for at least two years, there's this heavy battle going on between David and Ishbosheth, and we only get this one battle. That's all we get. And so there's this war going on, but we get this one battle in uh, chapter 2, and that's all we get. But verse uh, 1 of chapter 3 tells us that this war is going on. And as they continue this war, David grows stronger while uh, the house of Saul or uh, Ishbosheth or Abner, whichever one you want to talk about is getting weaker. All right. Everybody good? Any questions yet? I feel like I could say anything right now and you guys would go along with it. Yeah. You guys are you guys are so you guys are so dead right now. I hear we're getting some weather coming in. You guys want to talk about the weather? Does that help? <laughs> Verse two. Here we go. <laughs> it is the time change. It must be. Okay, sons were born to David at Hebron. All right, remember, so uh, David is, is king of Judah, and, and uh, he is at Hebron. This is where he is at this point. Now, he'll move. We'll see all that as we walk through 2 Samuel. But for now, he is in Hebron. That is his hometown that he is living in as king of Judah. And so the, the reason that we see this list here, he'll have more children that we will walk through later, but the reason we see this particular list in this particular place is because all of these sons 
will have a chance, or would have a chance, I should say, at, at his reign, at his kingdom, once David uh, dies. All right? That's why we see this list in this particular place. All right? So, uh, sons were born to David at Hebron. Their firstborn was Amnon. Amnon. Uh, and then, and, and then we, we walk through this and we see uh, six different wives. Six different wives. Um, oh, my. That is right. Yes. Six different wives uh, deliberately, as we see and will see as we walk through this, he's deliberately using marriage for political purposes. Uh, political purposes, but he's also using them as a familial purpose. So he is taking... Uh, one thing that we know about David and we learn about David, and we, we, we know from, from just the, even maybe some of the... the rudimentary knowledge that we have about David. We know that, that he was after God's own heart. He, he really tried, and in most instances, abide by the Torah. All right? We're going to be hard-pressed to find uh, ways that he did not abide by the Torah. And everybody understands the Torah. That's the five books, right? Of, of the uh, Pentateuch, uh, the first five books of the Old Testament, all right? So he, he, he really, really did truly try to abide by the Torah. And so uh, he is trying to abide by Genesis 1.28. God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it, all right? And so really and, tr and truly, we make fun of people that have six kids, <laughs> right? Who, who would do that? That's retarded, all right? And, but b back then... I have six kids, in case you're wondering. But, um, but back then, really, that is, that is one thing that they were trying to do. They were trying to, to, uh, to abide by the Torah, abide by God's law, which said that they were to be fruitful and multiply. All right? And so I am doing my share as well. All right? So I'm, I'm very biblical in that way. Very biblical. So here's the thing, though. Here's where we're going to set for just a little bit of time. And, and I was really hoping for some more reciprocation. We'll see if we get there. It, this could be a very long night if this doesn't pick up. But um, six different wives, all right? And I want you to hone in on this. And, and this is, is going to be funny, but this is a serious conversation as well. Did he abide by the Torah or not? Did he abide by the Pentateuch, uh, the Old Testament? Uh, I don't know what word you would rather me use, but that's... The, all the same uh, word for us to use. So before we dive into me showing you one way or the other, l let me just ask you, uh, does, does he, by having more than one wife, by having six in this instance, does he abide by the Old Testament law? Does he abide by God's law? Does God's law allow for kings, by the way, kings, that's the that's kind of the, the, the thing that we're going to talk about. Not just your regular person, but a king. Does God's law allow for you to have more than one wife? Yeah, absolutely. Got him in big trouble a lot, more often than not. God only gave, but he, he, he could only spare one rib, though. That was, that was the problem. Yeah, how many ribs do you want? So how many ribs did David, David gave up a lot of ribs. Yeah. yeah. That's why I don't eat anything on a bone. I give up all eating ribs. Anybody else? Well, I did. How come he married had six wives? How come he just had one wife? What happened to your eye? I don't know. I ran into something. <laughs> well, it's black. I know. Did Andy, did Andy do that? No. You can tell me. I don't know why he did that, but we're going to talk about it here in just a minute. Anybody else? So did he abide by the Old Testament law, or did he go against the Old Testament law? That's the question. And we're going to plead the fifth for a moment. Yes? Were you, were you thinking of Deuteronomy 17? 17? Deuteronomy chapter 17. Uh, this is what Larry told me about. Deuteronomy chapter 17. I'll read verses 14 to 17, although 17 is the money, but I want to make sure we get context. So 14 through 17. When you enter the land which the Lord your God gives you, and you possess it and live in it, and you say, I will set a king over me like all the nations who are around me, you shall surely set a king over you, 
whom the Lord God, whom the Lord your God chooses, one from among you, uh, one from among your countrymen, you shall set as king over yourselves. You may not put a foreigner over yourselves who is not your countryman. Moreover, he shall not mul multiply horses for himself. So let me ask you this: horses. He's not to multiply horses for himself. That passage. So what does that what does that mean to you? Does that mean that uh, he can have the ones that he he bought, but he, he's not to to have them breed and make more horses? Uh, what does this mean to you when when the word of God says that he shall not multiply horses for himself? Anybody got anything? I think it's a picture of worldliness. So he's talking about. You can have some, but don't get too many and be greedy and be like the world. Is that where you're going? Is everybody okay with that? Sounds good. All right, we'll go with that. And then he goes on in verse 16, Nor shall he cause the people to return to Egypt to multiply horses, since the Lord has said to you, you shall never again return that way. He shall not multiply wives for himself. This is verse 17. Or else his heart will turn away nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. So what do you think? That is, that is the Old Testament law. This is the one that you turn to when you say, yes, he abided by the Old Testament law, or no, he didn't. And here's the kicker, guys. This is the kicker that really threw me for a loop. That we are divided down the middle. Middle? Middle. We are divided down the middle. Um, you, you've got uh, literally almost half or right at half uh, of, of your scholars that will say that this means that he could have more than one and therefore he abided by the Torah or the Old Testament law or the Pentateuch. And there are others, the other half, that say, no, this, this actually says that you can only have one wife and therefore he did not abide by the Torah, by the Pentateuch, by the Old Testament law. So, I ask you, this is the passage, there's, there's no more to look at, all right? there's, there's nothing else that we can could, we could really look at. I mean, as far as, as far as the king, I mean, we can look at scripture in its entirety and know for a fact having more than one wife is not a good idea, right? I mean, we, could all, we can all, I think, agree with that, and, and I'm being serious, I think we can all agree with that. We have our hands full with one, Amen. all right, very good, but... but but that's not the question. The question is, biblically, did David abide by the Torah, by the Old Testament, by the Pentateuch? According to Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17, he shall not. Absolutely. He shall not multiply wives for himself or else his heart will turn away, nor shall he greatly increase silver and gold for himself. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. What would you like to look at? Many wives. So tell me yours exact. Yeah, absolutely. So yours says, he shall not have many wives for himself. Very good. Anybody else have a different translation they want to share? Two is too many. Amen. We're getting amens everywhere. I'm not sure if that's because he abided by the Old Testament law or if we're trying to bring in our own experiences. I'm not really sure. Does anybody have, or will somebody look up the message? I'm really interested in what the message has to say about this passage. Anybody able to do that relatively quickly? Is that a yes or a no? Yes. yes. Fantastic. Yes, and Gideon in Judges chapter 8, verse 30 is one that I, I picked up on. Now, Gideon had 70 sons who were his direct descendants, for he had many wives. Um, and make sure he doesn't build up a harem, selecting wives who will divert him from the straight and narrow. Yeah, very good. So, so you can see, you can see how, how we can be divided on this. But I'm going to push us. I'm going to push us. We're going by the word of God. We're going by what Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17 says. He shall not multiply wives for himself. If we look at this passage, one says many. One says don't build up a, a harem. All right. So 
How many of you guys think that by having more than one wife, he abided by the Old Testament? He can have, as a king, more than one wife. How many of you think he cannot have more than one wife, he can only have one wife even as king? How many of you say, I'm more confused than when I walked in this morning or this afternoon? Okay, all right, very good. That's great. That's wonderful. Huh? Somebody voted both ways? That's just wrong. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So uh, whichever, whichever way you go, uh, you, you got something? Maybe uh, he. Yeah, maybe not. He's pleading the fifth. He's he's trying to help David out. He's trying to he's trying to give David a bone. Uh, Brother Leroy, what do you think, sir? Can you bring wisdom to our class? That's right. I agree. Okay, let me, muck, let me muck the water a little bit. You guys said you, a lot of you, I think I had the most votes saying you're more confused now than you were when you came in. I'm going to make it worse for you because that's just how nice I am. Let's jump to number five, uh, verse 5, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come back. Um, I'm going I'm to go back, but for now, just because I, I, I love to confuse you all. Verse 5 and the 6th, Ethereum by David's wife, Igla. All right. Where in the other verses do we see any of them called his wife? I said verses two through five. Ding, 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 ding. Two through five. Stop cheating. I, absolutely. Context, context, context. In these verses, there's only one wife mentioned. All right. And so we're going to talk about that when I get to verse five. But let's go back just very briefly. Uh, as I already mentioned, Judges chapter eight, verse 30, Gideon had 70 sons who were his direct descendants for he had many wives. Let's go through his sons extremely quickly. Amnon was his first one. Amnon. We, we, what do we know about Amnon? Anybody know? Anybody remember Amnon? Important figure because he's a big loser. Anybody remember Amnon? Tamar. Absolutely. Yes. Yes, he defiles his sister. That's right. Second uh, uh, Samuel chapter 13. We don't have time to go into that, but we will get there eventually. All right. Caleb, uh, the next son, it literally means quite like the father. Uh, his name, if you're looking in First Chronicles chapter 3, where it, it gives the actual uh, listing of, of David's uh, genealogy, his name is Daniel. So most people believe that Caleb was actually kind of a, a pet name for his son, uh, Daniel. He most likely died young. We know that to be true because we know nothing else about him, and he is not mentioned anywhere on uh, of having been able to take over the throne or anything like that. So he died young. Number three, his third son, Absalom, divine father of peace. Anybody know anything about Absalom? He did have to go away for a while. Absolutely. He actually went, ended up going, just a fun, fun fact for you, in case you're ever on Jeopardy uh, with Aaron Rodgers. Um, and so he, uh, he, he actually went and hid at his mother's hometown, where his mother was from, for a while. But he, he, uh, he ended up killing his brother uh, of Amnon. And he died of a bad... Her he did. That's true. All right. Adonijah. Adonijah. What do we know about him? Anybody? Prominent figure in contention for David's throne. 
ends up uh, being assassinated, and Solomon gets the throne. All right? First Kings. And then Eagle of David's wife, David's polygamy or head of household. Interesting that, that we only see that in verse 5 is David's wife. Uh, literally, um, we know that, that he obviously is in polygamy. I mean, that's quite obvious. Um, most people believe that either uh, that, that this, this woman here was the head of his harem, at least at, at this time, all right? Head of household, the main wife, the main one, number, number one. He, he ranked them. Yeah. I'm just kidding. That was probably a very, very bad idea. But uh, this is what we see in, in Scripture. What? No, you good? All right. Verse, uh, anybody got anything? Not that I can add it to or take away, but that's just what it is. Everybody good? I looked at the, I looked at the Hebrew in the Deuteronomy chapter. Thank you. And the verb that's used for, like, many, plethora. It's actually the verbal, which is literally just to increase. Okay. One plus anything is wrong. So you agree with Leroy because you're on the same pew? Yeah, hey, Leroy. All right, very good. He agrees with you. <laughs> huh? Well, apparently, is it the same word? Did you go back and look at the horse? We'll let you go back and look. You let us know. We're going to move on to verse 6. Okay, as if that wasn't weird enough, we're getting weirder in Second Samuel chapter 3. Verse 6. I'm going to read, uh, I don't know, maybe down to 8 or something. I, I missed Leroy? Oh, I'm sorry. I think that this was a, a choosing the, the attitude of the world, the principles of the world, as over against the principles of God. And for the king, it was established. Multiple wives attested to the fact that you were a great king. And the more king, and some of them had 70 and 80 children. Right. And uh, just because he, he stole uh, somebody else's wife. He's getting ready to steal her. Yeah. Which that's that's another one that we're gonna talk about. Yeah, you're you're right on. So that's just part of what God said. Hundred percent agree, yes. Yes, sir. It does, and not just in, in marriage, in any area of our life where we step out of God's will. It definitely does not suit us well. How many horses? It's the same word, but I just think I kind of I agree with Leroy. Oh, I, my. I, Why don't you just move a little closer then? It's not a one-to-one. -one. Like, yeah, he says to not increase in the name of those things, but there's no established natural order in the Bible for how many horses and how much silver we can. Mm -hmm. But there's clearly an established natural order for how many wives. Agreed. Agreed. Okay, let's move on. We've had enough of wives for one night, haven't we? Yes, we have. Amen. Moving on to six. <laughs> I hope my wife doesn't watch this. It, it came about while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David. Okay, again, this is the battle that's been going on, continuing to go on. Uh, we've seen it in, in chapter 2, and, and we'll continue to hear about it, but not really see it in detail. And Abner was making himself strong in the house of Saul. Okay, so Abner, remember, who's Abner? We've got to remember these people. They're, they're, they're going to play an important role. You guys remember who Abner is? He's in charge of Saul's army. He's the commander of Saul's army. Saul is now what? Dead. Dead. So, but Abner's not. He's still in charge of the army. And he finds this, this uh, son, Isbosheth, and he brings him and says, I'm going to put you in charge uh, and make you king. Although in reality, as we walk through this, Abner is trying to take that role. All right? So Abner is, is king of the, or is uh, over the army, commander of the army, but he is trying to be the figurative uh, uh, king as well. So he's making himself strong in the house of Saul. Now Saul had a concubine 
whose name was Rispa. And we learned about her in 1 Samuel, I think chapter 18, maybe 22, something like that. doesn't really matter. Uh, the daughter of Aya the, and Ishbosheth said to Abner, Why have you gone in to my father's concubine? And then Abner was very angry over the words of Ishbosheth and said, Am I a dog's head that belongs to Judah? Today I show kindness to the house of Saul, your father, to his brothers and to his friends, and have not delivered you into the hands of David, and yet today you charge me with a guilt concerning the woman. If there's anything you need to know right now, you probably should not call your wife the woman. All right? That's, that's probably something you should learn right now. All right, so uh, here's what's going on, as, as, as you didn't get it the first time. Abner goes into the concubine that actually belonged to Saul. Um, this is um, a king's right, a king's privilege, a king's whatever you want to call it. Uh, we, we see this in Scripture. I'm not going to give you the, the, where it's found right now, because we're going to go back over this very, very quickly next week. But, um, but we do see this in Scripture, where uh, the king can take the new king can take the old king's concubines. Here's the problem. Is Abner king? No, Abner is not king. Ishbosheth is king. Abner, that's why it says that Abner is becoming more strong in the house of Saul. He is trying to usurp Ishbosheth. All right? Ishbosheth notices this and he comes into Abner. He confronts him, but Abner uh, begins to get angry and, and he says just what you and I would say if somebody came at us. We would say, Am I a dog's head? Right? I mean, that's what we would say, right? When we're angry, we say the same thing, right? So this is Abner being angry, and, and this is what, what he says to him. And then, um, and then verse 9, May God do so to Abner, and more also, if, uh, as the Lord has sworn to David, I do not accomplish this for him, to transfer the kingdom from the house of Saul and to establish the throne of David over Israel and over Judah, from Dan even to Beersheba, and he could no longer answer Abner a word because he was afraid of him. All right, I don't have time to dissect all of that, but here it is in a nutshell. Abner uses this to turn it against Ishbosheth to say, I am now going to join forces with David, and we're going to kick Ishbosheth out. But in reality, he's not doing any of that. He's just actually playing. Uh, he, he's being a hypocrite. He's playing a part, right? He's playing a part that says, uh, you have now pushed me too far, Ishbosheth. No longer are you going to be king. I'm going to go over here with David, and we're going to annihilate you, all right? But in reality, that's not what happens. He, he goes and he tries to, to, um, to join forces with David, um, and it doesn't work out so well. And then at the end of this chapter, we're going to see that Abner is, uh, dies, um, and so we're going to see all that. But anyways, uh, don't have time for any more questions. Hopefully, prayerfully, after all of that, we have, we have come to the conclusion that stepping outside of God's will, and God's will is one man, one wife, right? One man, one woman for eternity, right? For life, and, and that is prayerfully what we have discovered. And stepping outside of that only brings trouble and chaos and hurt and things like that. Any questions? Anything you guys see that I didn't see? Because I'm sure that there's plenty of that. Okay, fair enough. All right, boss, you've got it from verse 12 next week. Here we go, prayer list. Everybody got one? Who needs one? Who needs a prayer list? We've, we've got them all over, needs them, everywhere. All right. Andy was running after Josiah because he was faster and bigger. So I don't think Andy should have ran after him, I don't think. All right. Let's dissect these tonight. Spend some time in prayer. After all, this is why we're here, right? I'm trying to shift to prayer. You guys ever heard of that? Heathens. A bunch of heathens over there. They wake up now. All right. Nancy Neff. Nancy Neff is still in the hospital. Saw her today. She's in room 315. Not that that matters anymore. 
or it used to, we'd put the room numbers so all the wonderful church members can go visit them. Doesn't matter anymore. Uh, but she's in room 315, in case you care. Uh, but she is, uh, she said today, I went and saw her this morning, she said, as long as I don't move and don't breathe, I'm not in any pain. So, yeah. I'm, she fell actually Sunday morning right before she came to church, and she still came to church. Yeah, it got worse as the day went on and went to the ER Monday morning. So found out that she cracked two ribs, and her kidney function is not very good at all. Her creatinine level is at a 5, should be at a 1. Should be at a 1. Um, not really, no. No. Nope. So be praying for Nancy. Uh, uh, so you could pray for, for two things specifically, or three things specifically. Um, her pain, her kidney function, but, but uh, with her kidney function, her sodium. She needs her sodium to increase, and as her sodium increases, the other numbers should start to come in line. So really, if you, if you think about Nancy, be praying for pain and her sodium, all right? Sandra Bird, foot surgery went well. Any updates? Doing great. She's, she'll be on the uh, knee board for six weeks or something? She's out in the garden. Out in the garden. That chica is tough. All right. David Gray, he had his hernia surgery this morning, uh, went really, really well. Uh, the thing that he was concerned with is his sugar level. Now, I don't know anything about sugar level, so, so you guys help me out. His sugar level was right at 300. Okay, everybody says that's not good. Okay, so it's right at 300. So they almost didn't do the surgery, but they got it down to like 298 or something. So, so it was great. So he, he, he would ask that you pray for his pain level, but also his sugar level, because obviously that's, that's a problem. What's a normal sugar level? I'm not sure, but he did text me a couple of days before and asked about asked that I would pray for that. Um, so maybe he had a test before. I'm not really sure. I don't know the answer to your question. what God does when you have more than one wife. <laughs> That's right. Is Kay Webb up there? I haven't seen her all night. Sister Kay Webb is going to go in for surgery on Monday the 15th. Is that this Monday? That's this Monday, is it not? Yeah. She's going to go in for surgery this Monday. Sister Kay, Sister Kay Webb. She will go at what? Yeah, she goes in for surgery this this Monday. Uh, be praying for her. Um, it is um, dealing with cancer, so be be praying for Sister K. Webb. Continue to pray for our Good News Club. We've been running 19, 20 kids, 18. I mean, we're we're running great number of kids, and it's it's astounding. Uh, we've got other good news clubs that are going on across the state where they only have one or two. We, we are blessed to have 1920. So God is really, really blessing and, uh, our good news club. About two-thirds of those kids who go there don't go to church anyway. So we're exposing kids to the gospel that um, may be winning them. And, and giving them a copy of the gospel. So, yeah. Where did we, they were just on the street. We grabbed them by the hair. Has been, has been. It's on Thursday afternoons, Thursday afternoons from three thirty to five. Horse man, oh, at horse man, yeah. They're all horse man students. It's, our, it's part of their after school program. Yeah. yeah. This particular one, yeah, but anybody can run one at a school. Anybody can run the school. Right. So be praying, be praying for them that they'll be continue to come and be sensitive to the word. And I will tell you that um, Tommy 
and Barbara. They're obviously not here tonight. Um, Barbara's mother passed away this morning at 9.02, um, and so they're not, they're not here this evening, but I'll, I'll give you some updates on that. But they volunteered to do the snacks, and since they've brought in some good snacks, we've got more kids, so, <laughs> you know, that's okay. That's all right. Come in for the snacks, and they leave with Jesus. So that is, that's the plan. 3.30 to 5. The kids do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's part of their after-school program. Yeah. All right. And then uh, Don and Don are here, so continue to pray for them. And then expecting a baby, Glenn and Emily Simpson. Um, we've got the meal train going on for them, so hopefully you guys have signed up for a night for that. And then uh, nursing homes, no updates there. Uh, don't forget our Thanksgiving meal. Uh, fellowship meal next Sunday, not this coming, but the next one that's after this one. I don't really know how to say that. I always say the next one, but people make fun of me because the next one would be this one. Yeah, but it's not, it's not this one. It's the next one. That's what I say. Yeah, that's what I say. Uh, and then, and then the gift of Christmas presentation, December 11th, uh, Robert Shonicky <clears throat> did pass his bus test, so <clears throat> he's going to drive. So put that into your, put that into your decision making. Uh, you know, I'm just putting that out there. Some of you may want to go, some may, may not want to go. You know, just putting that out there. It's in Texas, Plano, Plano, Texas. It's a one day trip. It's a long day, three and a half hours there. And uh, we'll have Tommy and Barbara feed you snacks. He's the perfect host. That is true. Right? That is true. I'm not sure if this is a compliment or not, Robert, but this is. <laughs> yes. Phenomenal, huh? I don't need, they asked me to be in it, actually. I, I declined, though. I didn't have time. Yeah. Family needs. Wilson family. So uh, Barbara's mother's uh, name, Mary Jo Hollis. She did pass away this morning at 902. She was a believer, so she is now in glory with our Heavenly Father. So what a day of rejoicing this has been for her. But Tommy and Barbara are obviously dealing with all the emotions that go into that. So be praying for them. Uh, funeral services, I will keep you updated on, but I think I have an update on that. Wednesday the 17th at 10 o'clock. But the, it's in Cushing, so, but anyways, there you go. 10 o'clock, but it's in Cushing. All right, uh, continue to pray for the Hudson family. Physical needs. Linda Rudd's nephew, and then Rind Linda Rudd, she's going to have uh, surgery on her right thumb on the 10th of December. Catherine Brown's friend, uh, remember that her friend's son, he has a surgery scheduled now. It's on November the 18th. James, how's your sister? Okay. Oh, goodness. All right, that's not good. We will continue to pray for sure. Continue to pray for Abigail Mace's parents, Julie Floyd's mother. Be praying for her. I don't have any updates on Mike Dover, so I would give it to you if I had. Uh, the gays are back, right? Gays are back? Okay. Ruth Craig, uh, she is doing better with the pneumonia, but still... Um, Still not great, so be praying for her. Amelia, um, she did get to see the doctor this week. The doctor believes that there are febrile seizures, but they're going to verify that on the 19th with an EEG. So uh, continue to pray for wisdom for the doctors on that. 
Steve Jackson, what's next for you, my friend? We haven't scheduled it yet? Okay. I need to pray for Margaret Aiken as well. Okay. Now it's your turn. Paul. sister-in-law Betty okay okay that is difficult okay well that'll be nice absolutely we will definitely add her to our list. We will definitely replace that fan this week, too. Is that driving anybody else nuts? It will be gone before Sunday, I promise. Just don't tell Tom who did it. Yeah, it's that fan up there they installed. Squeaky. That's true. So does a hammer. I'm not going to tell you it was Tom. <laughs> Any other new ones? I'm just having an appendix a scope. Esophagus. Yes, when is that? Oh, you don't know? Okay. I have severe esophageal spasms. Oh. true don't recommend it but you could yeah yes my wife my wife did have her MRI done yesterday uh, last night and we don't have the results yet expect those tomorrow so um, still having some back pain and Mariah Mariah has some scans she's she has a connective tissue disease just like Noah has uh, not quite as severe um, but uh, she's got ultrasound and x-ray on Monday Thank you for that. Her ribs keep popping out of joint. So. Yeah. Fun pain for an eight-year-old to deal with. Any other new ones? Okay. All right. Well, let's, let's pray for these things. If uh, Chris Peters could turn on his mic this time. What's that? Yes, it's probably Elders Danlos or Donlos, but it's, yeah, undiagnosed at this point. Yes. Okay. I've got you on here. It's got to find you. Hold on. Thank you. Thank you very much. What day? Mo Monday? Thank you. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, thank you. Um, so she said that the thunderstorms till 8 is what they're saying. So um, please feel free to stay and and chat and all those wonderful things until the weather passes if you like or if you just prefer to get wet feel free to to leave you know? Do we, have these snacks? we have tons of snacks this is a baptist church <laughs> no doubt 
we've got you covered. And, and Bethany has been preparing a lesson, so if you guys want to stay, she might, might give you a, a lesson afterwards. So, All right. Who all do we have? Chris Peters, if you'll start us. Brother Robert, if you'll go second. Brother Leroy, if you'll close us out. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Lord, we just thank you for this evening. Um, thank you for your word. And we thank you for the privilege of just working through hard passages together um, for RJ's leadership and just for the, the priesthood you give all of us, that you give us the Holy Spirit to give us clarity, and that's just multiplied when we're together, and we appreciate that so much. And we pray for uh, so many on this prayer list with, with cancers and surgeries and hospitalizations. I think especially of, of Nancy. Um, they've been fighting in and out of doctors and hospitals for quite some time, Lord. I know they've got to be tired. Um, we pray that you would strengthen them and encourage them. Uh, we, we just pray for, for our whole church family. Help us to know how to build one another up as it is difficult to do visitation and things of, of that nature. We pray that we would find ways to live life together and uh, just make that meaningful and to, to truly be brothers and sisters under you. Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us an opportunity to come to your house tonight. Lord, we just pray that, Father, as we reflect on the words that have been taught by our pastor, that we would be, Father, in your will according to the way you would want us to be. May we be tuned into your word and to your will. Father, may we learn by the examples that's been given before us. Lord, we just thank you for your love, your goodness. Lord, we want to pray for those that are on our list. Father, there's many here that are sick in the hospitals. Father, those that uh, are going in for tests, we just pray that you would give the doctors and the nurses the wisdom that they need to determine the prognosis of these individuals. We thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this prayer meeting service. We need to be a praying church. We need to care for one another as a church family, Lord. And we pray, O oh God, that we may always, Lord, pray one for another as family members. And Lord, we see this page of names and the injuries and the surgeries and the various family needs and our hearts are moved. We find that we do not perhaps know the people involved very well. But Lord, we want to pray one for another. And we want to be, Father, a praying family. And Lord, help us to care one for another. How much we need that for ourselves. And we pray, Father, that you would help us to pray for a spiritual power in our church. That we may be, Father, a family of power. That we may see, have a vision, Lord, of what is needed in our community and in our nation, Lord. Not to be so deeply involved in political matters that we do not see the spiritual needs, Lord, that exist all around us. And, oh, God, how many those are. And, Lord, we pray, oh, God, that you would help us, Lord, to be daily, Lord, in prayer one for another. Oh, Father, we pray, Lord, for Tommy and Barbara Wilson tonight. And with the loss of Barbara's mother, 
We pray, Father, that you'd be with them as they pass through this time that they've anticipated coming, Lord. We pray we lift them up to you. Help our church, Lord, to be strong spiritually, to grow in our knowledge of your word, every part of it, the Old Testament, New Testament, the books that we rarely look at, Lord. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to grow, that we may be a, a family of Christian individuals, Lord, that we can speak, Lord, to our community and speak to our friends about spiritual things and speak to them on the basis of your holy word. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you would bless this church as we come to a close of our prayer meeting service tonight. We're grateful, Lord, for the time that we've had together, just to be here together, to share our needs, to share our knowledge or our lack of knowledge of your word. Help us to grow, Lord, because your word is so precious to us. Lord, bless us as we go to our homes. Give us safety, Lord, in everything that we do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.